Hello friends, today we are going to talk about uh, operational risk, uh, third uh, uh, pillar one risk and uh, very, very important for the operations of the bank or any organization and uh, it has been a, a late realization about the importance of the uh, operational risk. Uh, even going by the uh, regulator's prescription for the capital charge came in only in Basel II. Uh, till such time, oper operational risk, uh, there was no capital charge. Uh, today, we uh, talk about what is operational risk, what is the scope, key drivers of operational risk, analysis uh, of operation type, types and the management process and framework for operational risk, identification, measurement, mitigation, and then we talk about uh, integrated risk management, which uh, again, is uh, with the okay, operational risk uh, being uh, uh, recognized as one of the major risks, then most of the organizations which are in the operation do have this risk. So there is, comes the concept of integrated risk management. And then we will see what is the need for IRM and the approach and the advantages. So let us just look at some of the pictures uh, which will give you an idea about the operational risk event which have happened globally. Uh, uh, even going uh, terrorist attack on World Trade Center, then the Mumbai uh, floods, Mumbai terrorist attack in 2008, and Japan earthquake. Uh, and then uh, look at some of the uh, financial uh, events which have happened in the financial loss. In our own case, Harshad Mehta scam, which resulted into a loss of 4,000 crores. Ketan Parikh, again, uh, collapse of GTB and then Associate General, a single uh, dealer putting Associate uh, General to a loss of 4.9 billion. And Satyam scam itself was worth 8,000 crores. And then the uh, Citibank fraud, multi-crore, 400 crores. So these are all the uh, examples of uh, uh, operational uh, uh, risk events which have put the uh, uh, organization into a lot of uh, uncomfort and uh, sort of uh, attracting pub public uh, uh, sort of uh, reputational issue for all the banks. Now Basel definition, because uh, we must remember that this is the only risk which Basel has put a uh, formal definition. The Basel, so we'll go by the Basel definition. The Basel defines operational risk as the risk of loss resulting from inadequate or failed internal process people and system or from external events. So the causes of the uh, operational risk comes from people, process and systems and external events. The operational risk as defined by Basel includes legal risk but uh, excludes strategic and reputational risk though these two risks are quite important uh, for the operations of a financial institution. Now let us understand what's a legal risk because operational risk includes legal risk. Legal uh, risk includes but is not limited to exposure to fines, penalties or punitive damages resulting from failure to comply with the laws. Basically it talks about the punitive actions either by the regulators or the bank also getting into kind of legal issues, litigations from their own customers on account of the services provided or even selling the third party products and all. So this basically is a legal risk. Now strategic risk, quickly we look at what strategic risk is. Strategic risk is the current and prospect impact on the earning or capital uh, arising from adverse business decisions or improper implementation. Maybe the strategy may be good, but the implementation has gone fail. So there also, it also amounts to strategic risk. And the strategy, you know, there is no response from the industry for the strategies of the firm. This is again a kind of a strategic risk. A reputation risk is potential and that the negative publicity regarding the institution's business practices, whether true or not, will cause a decline in the customer base, costly litigation or revenue reductions. So the, uh, any rumors about an organization may not be true, but it will have an uh, impact on the customer's trust on the organization. So it may have an, uh, a business impact. Now let's quickly uh, also understand the difference between operations 
risk and operational risk. A lot of uh, many times these two are considered the same. But basically, the operational risk when we talk about it is about the managing a branch operation. It's only about the uh, maybe the deposits, loans, and uh, some of the other parts. But the operational risk is bigger. It includes uh, operations, reporting, and compliance. So initially, operational risk was treated as anything which cannot be quantified in the bank or any organization. So basically, the organizations and mainly the banks were looking at credit risk and market risk. And the operational risk, maybe many times it got wrongly reclassified in one of these two risks, thereby uh, losing uh, uh, for the people to know what is the quantum of operational risk historically they have been incurring. Now, what is the scope of the operation is? It is very, very vast because the operational risk encompasses the entire organization, business lines, whether you are in credit, treasury, or in the retail, or even you, you are selling a third party products without actually getting exposed to any kind of other risk, you still are exposed to the operational risk. So, so long as you are in the operation, you cannot think of uh, saying that, yes, I, I'm totally, you know, I can avoid operational risk. Uh, present, present in virtually all banking transactions, very, very dynamic and uh, uh, unique events. The, when you say unique event, uh, it says uh, operational event which has happened once, which has been giving a loss. Uh, the next one may not be uh, the similar because when you put the controls to take care of the previous kind of operational risk event, uh, you will uh, have another kind of an event which is uh, may not be exactly the same, so your controls may not work. So it is very essential that clear appreciation and understanding by the banks of the operational risk is crucial to effectively manage and control. So unless you are aware, you will not be able to put effective controls and will not be able to manage. Uh, then what are the key drivers of the operational risk? One of the uh, recent experiences, globally, a lot of organizations have seen the impact of reputational risk, strategic risk, and a lot of operational events which have given them uh, big losses. And regulators pressure after Basel II the, uh, 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 with the explicit capital charge prescribed for the operational risk, risk events, uh, proper categorization, identification, and controlling of operational risk has become uh, the key in most of the banks. Market developments with the lot of complicated structural derivatives coming into the markets and uh, uh, large volumes being uh, outsourced by most of the uh, banks, it has increased the level of operational risk in the banks. But now, uh, with the operations being part of uh, every business line, so there was a need to address the operational risk events. And when it comes to capital allocation, uh, it is very necessary to identify the overall risk exposure of an organization in any business line so that the capital allocation can be made properly. Now, uh, the operational risk events by the type category are, uh, uh, basically there are seven categories, internal fraud, external fraud, employment, practice, and uh, workplace safety, clients, products and business practices, damage to physical assets, business disruption and system failures, execution, delivery, and process management. Now, internal fraud basically is uh, losses due to an act of a type intended to defraud, misappropriate property, or circumvent the regulation, whether internal or external, the law or company policy, uh, excluding diversity discrimination events. Uh, the important factor is which involves at least one internal party. So in case of an internal fraud, the, uh, the involvement of the staff is the key feature. Uh, the fraud could be because of unauthorized activity, not reporting properly or, uh, 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 or reporting wrongly. And theft and fraud, the internal staff also could be involved in the frauds, credit frauds, theft of banks property. Uh, cash or the traveler's checks, those kind of things, and misappropriation of the assets or forgery and, uh, you know, uh, accepting kickbacks and uh, bribes.
the external frauds basically are by the by a third party they are the losses incurred because of the uh, intended to defraud misappropriate property or circumvent uh, the law by third party it could be by way of a theft and fraud theft and uh, robbery of the bank's uh, assets it could be a forgery it could be a forged uh, uh, balance sheet check uh, kiting check kiting is basically you know uh, uh, issuing the checks without being balanced and getting a credit in the other account uh, the bank's account and system security with the banks using extensively the technology credit card payments atm payments funds transfer so the uh, systems are uh, prone to hacking and uh, the since uh, uh, with the hacking there is a threat of theft of information so earlier unless you have a physical access you cannot probably uh, get any information from the bank but uh, with the technology and most of the uh, transaction being happening on the internet uh, it is uh, uh, the hackers could still uh, have the access to the uh, bank's information employment practices and workplace safety is uh, one of the other major uh, loss event uh, related to uh, the organization following uh, wrong employment practices and then uh, uh, not observing the safety environment within the organization so that uh, which will attract a lot of uh, uh, employees uh, claims uh, and uh, resulting into worker compensation and discrimination is in the workplace either based on the race or sex also can uh, attract a lot of uh, litigation on behalf of the unions and employees and further the cl uh, clients products and business practices this is uh, losses arising from an unintentional these are all unintentional but you know or negligent failure to meet a professional obligation to a specific client so you uh, banks have a lot of uh, responsibilities uh, in different products they they also play a fiduciary role they also have a custodian role so there could be you know some uh, some of the while delivering the product if you, if there is an uh, sort of improper selling mis selling kind of thing improper business or market practices like insider trading which can attract the regulators uh, punitive measures and product flaws maybe that you have introduced a product but product has a lot of flaws which could attract a uh, lot of uh, you know litigation and could lead to a kind of a uh, uh, claims against the banks advisory activities uh, if you are claiming certain performance against uh, of the product if there are uh, it's again a part of misselling this also can result into operational losses a damage to physical assets it could be because of the uh, disaster losses or external uh, sources like terrorism and vandalism so anything which is uh, you know damaging the physical assets of the bank could again lead to operational risk and uh, losses and business disruption and system failures are very very prominent uh, in the current scenario when the banks have started using technology a lot whether it is uh, different kind of delivery channels or their outsource their own uh, uh, kind of system maintenance to others so the system when you say system it's a hardware failure could be software and lot of telecommunications is involved with this uh, centralized uh, core banking services you rely heavily on the telecommunication and uh, so there are possibilities of disruption happening because of system failure execution delivery and process management losses from failed transactions processes processing or process management from relations uh, with trade counterparties and vendors so there could be some error in transaction capture execution and maintenance and even monitoring and reporting if there are failed uh, mandatory reporting obligations so this also uh, or inaccurate external report uh, in the current uh, scenario of uh, transparency and uh, regulators insisting on corporate governance uh, you could attract a lot of penalties if there are uh, you uh, you know err on all these counts execution delivery and process management continued again uh, with the customer intake and documentation wrong documentation uh, 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 without taking or client's permission whenever you are taking information sometimes you are uh, you know required to declare to the customer what type of information you are taking from them 
and uh, the uh, incomplete or you know missing legal documents because the ultimately the documents had to be relied upon uh, when it comes to uh, you know enforcing the bank's rights so incomplete and missing documents is again a part of uh, 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 process management issues banks also undertake uh, a lot of deals uh, whether part of portfolio management or forex management and there is a lot of documentation which takes place before banks banks actually undertake these transactions the, there can be some you know errors in taking the documentation the documents ca can be improper probably are not made all the disclosures to the customers and the, there can be some errors in account ma account managing the account of the client as well so maybe you have given improper access there can be some mistakes in the postings of uh, the ledger accounts of the customers and uh, when banks are uh, doing these activities they also use a lot of vendors uh, th there can be an argument or there can be a dispute with the vendor service itself and the uh, you know the vendor dispute also may sometimes uh, result into operational risk losses to the bank now let us summarize uh, the causes we know that the people process systems and external events are the causes for operational risk and you have seen uh, different events loss events uh, internal fraud external fraud employment practice and workplace safety clients products and business practices damage to physical assets business disruption and system failure execution delivery and process management in both i mean the event and uh, which are uh, because of the causes ultimately impact uh, you know what uh, is uh, uh, is effect which basically is an operational risk loss uh, it ca can be by way of a legal liability uh, regulatory action you know that uh, currently the regulators are very very stringent about the reporting errors or i mean any any errors the banks make uh, while disclosing in their balance sheets and loss or damage to the assets restitution basically wherein you are required to uh, you know uh, make good the losses the customer has incurred and uh, loss of recourse because if you don't have a proper documents uh, i mean you lose the loss of recourse and then write down basically you straight away have to write down your assets